Hello, my name is Matthew, and I have the privilege of being paid by Ericsson to make the world a better place through open source, and for that, I am truly grateful. Today, I would like to show you how to do some GDB tracing. Now, GDB tracing is very cool. I would argue that it's not exactly as cool as LTTNG, but it has its own fun quirks. So, let's say you want to instrument your code. The first thing you need to do is add some trace points. So you open up your favorite C editor, which is of course CDT or CDT Cloud, and you right click on your bar and you'll see you can select your breakpoint types. Now, I know you've seen this a thousand times before, but your classic breakpoints stop the program, your dynamic printfs will output to the console and the trace points are what we want. We click on trace points and then we instrument our code however we want. Here I have a rather simple program, it's just a bunch of for loops, and you can see that it's working. So next up, I am going to try to debug it and trace it. I'm going to start by making a mistake. If you look here, I'm going to press F6 to go to next, next, I'll go to tracing. Tracing is not supported. What does that mean? Well, unfortunately, as far as I can tell, tracing is only supported with remote debugging. So what you need to do is go to debug configurations. And then from there, you go to your C, C++ remote application and you configure one like this. So now, trace, X, Y, debug, no good. New configuration, let's take a look. Now we have all of our information available. I'm going to put it into the circular buffer. The circular buffer means that it overrides the oldest stuff first, as opposed to overriding the newest stuff. Now I'm going to run it, but first I have to start tracing. So I start tracing, and then I'm going to save it to the disk under uh, trace.dpf. And I'm going to just put it in my work directory uh, directly. So I traced it, and now I will go to Trace Compass, which through the magic of interoperability I have right here. I'm going to go to my tracing project, and I'm going to find my trace.epf. Now the astute amongst you will see that it already is here. I can reload it, but the important thing is when you load it, you have to set your trace executable. So then, mine was in workspace, or Eclipse workspace, debug, trace XXY, and then you can open it once it's set. Now this is a little tricky. You want to put these side by side because if not, your focus is going to jump all the time. You click here and it's going to go up here. And with this, you have your trace. Now the cool thing about this trace is that obviously it's very simple to set up. However, the amount of data that you can Extract is rather limited and you need to go into your trace points to manually check them. And another problem is that quite often a lot of the details are unavailable in it. That being said, this is yet another amazing tool that you can have in your belt. I hope this helps and have a wonderful day.